Dark clouds hovered over the horizon and a strong gale snapped their banners. Damn it, a storm's coming. Gabor, take us to the nearest settlement. We must seek shelter. Soon the Lyrians arrived in Stulkap. The town square proved full of folk. Several dozen dwarves laden with large sacks and satchels stood about in smaller groups. When a thick snow began to fall, the dwarves cheered. Tears streamed down the cheeks of several, but Meave could not tell if they issued from some fortuitous occurrence or if the strong wind had wrung moisture from their eyes. What is it we witness? Why do they rejoice at a snowstorm? Asked Meave, pulling her hood over her head. Well, the blizzard's good cause to postpone their expedition by another day, Gabor responded. See, they've been conscripted by drawn lots to be settlers found homes in a village in Blackbrook Vale. Seven expeditions have gone that way already, and none survived longer than a year. Valley's cursed. No two ways about it. Intrigued, Meave proceeded to speak with the settler's leader. He confirmed Gabor's claim. He had buried many a previous colonist. All had been abnormally thin, pale, prematurely greyed, as if some wraith had drawn the lifeblood out of them. Once the dwarf had finished his tale, he gripped the queen's hand firmly and, promising a generous reward, begged that she and her Lyrians accompany the expedition to Blackbrook Valley. Taint far, mere few leagues north along the main road. We'll make the march much easier to ken with the whole army, in case of any danger. I know not how useful our swords can be against curses and spectres, said Meave. But leave you bereft and in need I will not. We shall march with you into Blackbrook Vale and see to it that you are safely arrived. Then we will march on. The dwarf sped off to announce the good tidings to his settler brethren. By the time the blizzard had abated, they were ready to march. Blackbrook Vale. The name itself embodied infamy. Neve arrived expecting misty ravines, decrepit trees bound in spiders' webs and swarms of bats. What she saw was a warmly gurgling stream and the valley's gentle slopes blanketed in crocus blooms. Only a village of abandoned, ruined huts and a cemetery stretching to the horizon behind it attested to the valley's grim past. The village seems shrouded in a guise. Be not deceived, said the queen. Reynard! Some men to search the environs for any sign of life. The blood-curdling roar that came from the ruins a moment later proved the Queen's caution warranted beyond any doubt. Protect the settlers! Never fear! I shall protect you! Likely the last, that one! Should be safe, no? Following the victory, the settlers' hopes seemed renewed. Could the beasts they felled have killed the previous lot of colonists? Perhaps the curse that had long hung over Blackbrook Vale was at last broken. We thank you, your majesty, the settlers' leader said, slipping the satchel from his shoulder. You've granted us new hope and a new home. The dwarves had rolled up their sleeves, were prepared to go at the huts to repair them, when one of their number cried out, Hold! There's something here. Something reeky. A voice most familiar, thought Meave. Yes, for it belonged to Barnabas, the rescued inventor. The gnome had elbowed his way to the fore, stood on his toes, extended his nose, and inhaled through it like a pointing hound seeking out wildlife. Ignoring all queries, Barnabas had then sat down on the brook bank filled a glass flask with water, and was now holding it up against the sunlight, dipping into it the tip of his tongue and some strange scraps of paper extracted from the depths of the pockets of his patched coat. Finally, Barnabas stood, brushed his backside clean, and announced his findings. Well, we know with some certainty the reason for the settler's demise. Twere not beasts, no. They prowled in later, drawn by fresh graves. Twas the water. Oh, roll your eyes and whirl your fingers all you want, and then peer at the brook. Mary, a fish, all poisoned 
by subterranean films. The dwarves hemmed, hoard, and grumbled, and were a heartbeat from abandoning the veil for good. Then Barnabas reached into his satchel and extracted a device of his own making he termed an aqua purificator. That is to say, a water cleaner, as odd as it may seem. You need but siphon water through this straw. Then drink up, worry-free. Thus Meave rode out of Blackbrook Vale, deep satisfaction in her heart. The dwarves extolled her for being bold, shrewd, and wise while Gabor ensured this praise would likewise reach the meaty ears of Elder Hoog. Following the victory, the settlers' hopes seemed renewed. Could the beasts they felled have killed the previous lot of colonists? Perhaps the curse that had long hung over Blackbrook Vale was at last broken. We thank you, your majesty, the settlers' leader said, slipping the satchel from his shoulder. You have granted us new hope and a new home. The dwarves rolled up their sleeves at once and set about repairing the cottages. Sounds of hammering, sawing and chopping filled the valley, accompanied by a steady stream of dwarven song. Meave left Blackbrook Vale, her spirit soaring. How great was her subsequent shock when the elders summoned dwarves for another expedition to the valley. It seemed the settlers Meave had escorted had met the same fate as the colonists who had preceded them. Yet what had killed either group would never be known. We feed those suffering hunger. Hoo hoo ha. Hoo hoo ha. But our foes we smash asunder. Ay ay ay. Ay ay ay. Spell me ale and get a pound and hoo hoo ha. Hoo hoo ha, such is life neath the mountains, ay ay ay, ay ay ay. We're the dwarves of Mount Carbon, hoo hoo ha, hoo hoo ha. And two hammers is our sign, is our sign. Spill me ale and get a pound and hoo hoo ha, hoo hoo ha, such is life neath the mountains, ay ay ay, ay ay ay.